Well, here's a demo, and it's also uh, just me asking for advice because I'm sure there's ways to make this thing better. And, and what is this thing? Well, what I've done is uh, trained a neural network to predict what the Atari 2600 should be displaying just based on the contents of its memory. So this lets you uh, play a video game, play an Atari game, uh, not looking at the screen, but looking at what the neural network thinks the screen should be displaying based on what the contents of RAM currently are. So I guess to get a feeling for this, maybe the first thing to note is that the Atari 2600 only has 128 bytes of RAM, so it's not a lot of memory. So we can actually play some Atari games and just look at the contents of memory and just see it doesn't even seem plausible that you could play the game just by looking at, at the memory dump. So let's take, uh, let's take a look at that. We'll try the game Freeway by Activision. Okay, here I've got the game Freeway. And uh, in this game, you've got to get the chicken across the road. So you can move uh, up and down and try not to get hit by the cars. If you, if you do get hit by the car, you're, uh, you're sent back. And if you make it all the way across, almost, then I get a point. And then I can try it again. So uh, we can look at the at the memory dump while this game is uh, is being played. Okay, so here's uh, here's that video of me playing this this game again, and you can see that this particular location in memory is going up as my chicken player is moving up the screen, right? And as I'm sent back down, that number is uh, is being decreased. So the cartridge maybe is using that location in memory to store the position of my player, the, the Y coordinate for my player. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have the computer play this game freeway just thousands of times, mashing the keys randomly. That'll present the, the computer with thousands of examples of uh, the memory on the Atari, the 128 bytes of RAM, and what the screen is supposed to be displaying. And then, through the magic of generative adversarial networks, GANs, uh, the computer will learn a relationship between uh, the memory contents, the 128 bytes of RAM, and what's supposed to be on the screen. And then, we'll be able to play the game, not by looking at the screen, but by looking at what the neural network predicts the screen is supposed to look like based on the contents of memory. Okay, so let's try that. Okay, so we've got this game Freeway loaded. On the left-hand side of the screen, you see the truth, the, the thing the Atari is actually displaying on its screen. And on the right-hand side of the screen, what you see is the prediction. You're seeing what the neural network is predicting the Atari screen should look like just based on the contents of its memory after having played thousands of games of Freeway. So here we go. So I will uh, attempt to play the game Freeway just by looking at the output of the neural network. So I'm not able to see the true screen output. I'm just looking at the neural network output. And moving up. Whoops, got to back up a little bit here. I don't want to hit those cars, of course. I'm going to go up. Ah, my it's disappeared. Well, Part, oh, okay, part of the trouble is that when it was playing this game randomly, I'll just run across the screen and hope that I make it. Did I make it across? I, I can't even tell. Okay, I'm back at the bottom again. So part of the trouble is that when the, um, when the thing was playing this game, of course, it didn't, it didn't necessarily make it very far. So the neural network's only been trained on uh, <laughs> examples where it hasn't made it very far across the road. So it's kind of, well, oh, I'm not even sure where I am anymore. Rats. Well, that that didn't work as well as I might have hoped. Well, here's another way to play with this stuff. We'll freeze RAM, and then we'll dump that frozen RAM into the model to get a prediction. But then we'll wiggle individual bytes in memory to see the effect of those memory locations on the prediction. We'll try this on freeway. Okay, so we'll start perturbing memory, uh, start wiggling individual memory locations, uh, just starting at the top of memory here. And you know, it doesn't seem to be doing too much. We can move uh, move to the location that seemed to be related to the player's position before. And yeah, I can see that the player is kind of pulsing. It looks like that location in memory has something to do with the, with the player's position, which was what we saw uh, earlier as well. Ooh, now if I, go, if I go further in here, it looks like that location definitely has something to do with the, with the player's position. Definitely makes the player sprite 
move. Oh, and these these locations seem to have something to do with the positions of the cars on the freeway. They certainly seem to be moving when I wiggle those those memory locations. Yeah, that location is definitely moving the player. Looks like the player is is moving a bit when I move that when I change that memory location. What's surprising to me, I guess, is uh is just how stable this stuff really is. I mean, wiggling individual memory locations doesn't change the predicted output by very much. So I'd love to have ideas about how to make this better. I think this is a really cool idea, and um, clearly I could improve uh, how well it works. Let's try it with some other games. Uh, let's try the game uh, River Raid, which was certainly one of my favorites when I was a kid. Okay, well, here is uh, here's River Raid. So um, here we go. Boop. Okay. Oh, but now, see, now I'm actually looking at the true, uh, the, the actual screen this time, uh, which makes it quite a bit easier to play. Let me uh, switch over to just looking at the, um, at the prediction. Okay, so now I'm only looking at the prediction. Oh, yeah, I can't even really see where my ship, well, I guess I must have died. So I, I definitely played around with this some more. Oh, no, I can't really see where my ship is supposed to be. It's So I tried uh, to try to improve the sampling in this game. I, uh, I did something a little bit different in this game that I, uh, I just messed with uh, memory locations as the game was being played to move the, uh, the ship around randomly during training. I was hoping that would at least get it to display. No, I'm... It's, it's essentially impossible to play this game uh, just from the point of view of the, uh, <laughs> of the learned output. But okay, so let me just try to play this level looking at the actual screen because I, I can't actually play this game. So let's, um, let me try doing that. So I'm gonna fly through this, through this level uh, since I do wanna demonstrate one kind of neat thing here, going through this level, getting some fuel. So I, uh, I trained this thing uh, a little bit differently than I trained Freeway, just in the sense that I randomly messed around with, um, whoops, with the memory locations. But you can see it, it has learned some of the, uh, uh, some of the actual um, scenery in, in this level. Uh, well, sort of. I mean, <laughs> depends on how far this thing actually managed to play, I guess, during, uh, during training. But it's uh, it's definitely learned something about how <laughs> about how River Raid draws its uh, draws its levels. Whoops, I lost again. Okay, well let's let's play let's play another game. Okay, and here's Pitfall, another classic game. Uh, and you can see the the prediction as I'm moving my character around. It's not even oh for a second there. Let me see. Yeah, you can. It is the prediction is actually drawing the player on the uh, ladder, but not uh, not at any other time apparently. Uh, better run away from that, I guess. But it's doing an okay job of uh, at least it's figured out the uh, the the backgrounds, which is which is something certainly. Uh, yeah, here it's looking. Whoops! Oh, for a second there. Let's see. And the, yeah, and the ladder definitely knows about ladders but not, not a lot else. So, so I don't know, still not a, uh, not a fantastic job, I would say, with, with Pitfall. There are some crazier things that you can do as well. Uh, here, I've got uh, Pitfall playing on the Atari, but I'm uh, viewing the output of Pitfall through the model that was trained on, on River Raid. Uh, and this, you know, it doesn't, doesn't do too much, but it is kind of fun. I mean, to see what would uh, what would the memory of of Pitfall look like if it were being interpreted by uh, <laughs> by by River Raid, and uh, well, not 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 too good. You can kind of see see if I. Yeah, I can't even really tell when I'm when I'm moving um, between screens on uh, <laughs> on River Raid too too well. 
Huh. Yeah, look at that. That's that's just a mess. Yeah, it doesn't work too well, but the fact that it works at all is amazing. Right? That's I think a surprising surprising to me anyhow. If you want to play this yourself, uh, down below in the description, I'll put a link to a GitHub repository with the Python code and also a link to some of the trained models so you can try those, those models for yourself. I certainly would appreciate ideas about how to make this thing work, uh, work better. Uh, it's been really cool, I think, being able to use PyTorch, which is an amazing uh, kind of environment for setting up the kind of neural network stuff, and also the arcade learning environment. It's been really cool. It's kind of a playground for loading Atari games and being able to play around with them in this sort of machine learning environment. I mean, both, uh, both PyTorch and uh, this arcade learning environment, ALE, both really cool. And I just think it's crazy, you know, I mean, given that I played these games as a kid, uh, you know, sort of messing around with them from from this point of view. I mean, it's it's kind of surreal uh, just to think about what's just what's possible and just the scale of my current computer. I mean, 128 bytes of RAM is not very much. The models are quite large uh, in comparison, you know, and it's uh, it's just funny, I think, to think about how much computing power, uh, you know, we have access to today compared to what was on that Atari 2600 uh, so many years ago.